welcome to my studio. Today I'm working on a new painting. This is going to be for my big collector event in Santa Fe. And this is poppies. I've got a, just several different poppies. In fact, I have composed this painting from a lot of different pictures of flowers that I've just put together. I've shown you a few of those pictures in the beginning. And I'm going to start with this poppy here. Now my background is mixtures of phthalo blue plus cadmium orange plus white. And that's this. If you'll notice the tape, many of you have asked, you know, what's the tape? This is my frame. It's applied to a contemporary gallery wrap canvas. It's a heavy body acrylic. And I put that on the canvas first before I begin painting, then I tape off the edge and that way then the frame is protected from any paint. When I'm finished with the piece then I can just pull that tape off and we've got a frame. So I'm going to start working on this poppy first. I'm using a mixture of my cadmium red deep plus magenta. And here it picks up a little bit of that background color which right now I'm not concerned about that. In fact, it, what it does is just helps take that, that particular petal around. These, my light is coming from the upper left, so these petals are backlit. So you're going to get a little bit of a, a bright, brighter area here. This is cadmium red uh, light. And then here I'm using cadmium red. Now I've got to be very careful that I don't pull too much of that background color into my petal. So I'm going to pull my brush from the petal out into that blue. But you can see how putting this cadmium red light here just gives us the feel that that is, is backlit. I'm using a bright brush. This is a square brush. I prefer these because you can use that broad edge for a large area. Or you can use the corner of the brush to do a smaller area. So I'm now I'm, I'm working up here and again I have to be very careful that I don't pull that blue down in. Now see how my brush picked up some of that background color? So that's why I keep wiping my brush. I have to be very careful to just kind of lay that color on top of the, of the background. You can see each time I pick up that blue, so I have to clean my brush. The secret to the bright, crisp colors on your canvas is a clean brush. Now I really like the way that that made a little hole there because petals do tear and that just adds to the character. So what I'm going to do is just come back. I've saved my background color and I can just brace my hand right here on this part of the canvas that's not painted and just put a little bit of a, just go ahead and paint my blue back in there. And then I'll work my petal color around that. So it just kind of gives the feel of a little tear in the, in the petal just adds to the, the realisticness of it. Now I've, I've got both the cadmium red light and the cadmium red deep on my brush. And so I can pull that. And that just gives me a little variegated color on this petal. And I'm coming around. Again, I can... And see that thick brush stroke? That's what I want. I want that... Um, I want the edge of that petal to really have some texture. Now again, I have to keep wiping my brush. This is going to, there we go. Now what I'm going to do here, is those petals split. Like up there we've got a little split. In fact, I want to 
bring that color down in there. I was going to do a split here, but that's going to be too symmetrical, so I'm not going to do that. And Bad Girl, I had red on my brush, which I pulled into my background, so I just have to take some of my background color there and paint that out. So I'm not going to have a split here because I don't want it, want this, these petals, this flower, to just be perfectly symmetrical. So let's go ahead here and add, I'll get a few more of those little holes in the petals. That's, that's neat. And I have my reference material to the right of my easel. I have a tab array to the right of my easel and I have my laptop there. And so that's, I just have my reference pictures right there. This is from some poppies that we had growing in our yard in our previous home. They're called red corn poppies. I've got several different varieties of, of poppies in this, in this piece. Now I want this to be darker as we come down here. So I can bring Now I picked up some of that blue color in there, so I'm going to have to go back and I want to scrape this off. I'm going to use my painting knife and I'll just scrape that off. So I can come back then with my color and I won't pull that blue back. It's just a back and forth. Now these petals are crinkled, so this now let's see, I want to do my cadmium red light here, and I may mess up that little hole. Well, that worked too. That worked good too. There's still some little holes there. There we go. Get that. And now as we get down here, I can work the paint a little bit more. Again, I want this to be, this is backlit, so this will be my brightest. That sun is coming up above. Now the, the background is what is called portrait lighting. This is lighting that like Rembrandt and a lot of the old masters used. And what they did is on portraits, if the light was coming out in from the upper left, they would make the upper right side of the canvas darkest and the lower, no, the upper left side of the camera dark. Blech. I'm tongue twisted here. I don't have any brain mouth coordination right now. They would make the upper left of the canvas in the background the darkest. And then the background in the lower right would be the lightest. And that way, since the light's coming in from the left, the brightest light is on the left side of the subject, the shadows on the right side. So the dark background accentuates that bright light on the the subject's face, and then the light accentuates the shadows. This is something that Jack discovered as he was learning to paint. He went to museums all over, actually all over the world, and he taught himself to paint by studying the old masters. Just by observation, he was one of the most observant people I've ever known and just could figure things out. So now I can begin bringing these strokes around. And this is my cadmium red light plus a little cadmium red deep on my brush. So we want to get the, those petals are not just a totally even color. Then we get darker as we get down here. slightly smaller brush. I need to squeeze out a little bit more paint. I'm using quite a bit of paint here because I want to have that texture. I like my paintings to be able, when they're dry, I would like someone who is blind to be able to just run their hands over them and clean hands over them and feel the texture, feel the flowers. I have a friend at church who is blind and Diane just loves to be able to 
feel the texture of things. We don't think about that. Us sighted people don't, don't think about those kinds of things, but it is, it's, she says it's a real treat to be able to do that. Oh, it's okay if people feel your paintings. You don't want them just everybody doing it, but you've got to make sure they have clean hands. But that's okay. It's not going to ruin it if one or two people run their hands over your painting. Okay, now this is going to get darker as we come around here. Okay, I picked up some blue, so I need to be careful here. Now I want to come back with my dark then and make the, the curve of the flower here. There we go. This comes around. That's okay if I picked up a little of my blue there. Now one thing I want to do is with the light coming, there's going to be a little glow over here. So I'm using my Cadmium Red Deep. I need to be a little bit lighter so I just can come back over that stroke with my cadmium red light and make this a little bit lighter right here. It's a little bit too light so I can come back over there. there we go. What I want that to do is just give the feeling of that light glowing through the petal. It's not totally covered there. We're also going to have a little bit of a glow right here. There we are. Now the underneath of the center of the flower, this is a mixture, same colors that I used for the background. Phthalo blue plus cadmium orange, but this has more cadmium orange, so it makes it greener. comes into the flower. This is the base of the, the flower here. And I love these poppies because the um, stems have all these little hairs on them which just really make it fun to paint The light catches them. side of that center again I can just brace here on the canvas on the unpainted part and that just rounds the flower I don't want it to, I want this it's a mixture of my cadmium red light plus my cadmium red deep you can just see I just hold this try this again and just yeah, I can do this freehand there we go there. And here I'm going to use a little bit darker. And then bring a little lighter stroke right there. That sun comes through. So that's how I paint this red corn poppy. I've got still a little bit more to do, but that's basically finished. Just a tiny bit. Coverage. So I thank you for watching my YouTube videos. Please subscribe to my channel and you will get a notification every time that I put up a new video on YouTube. Also, visit my blog where you'll see the complete step-by-step -step process of this painting. You'll see a lot of more of the flower pictures that I used to do this. And you'll just see the complete step-by-step -step process. The link is in the description below. It is also, the address is on the final frame of my YouTube video. 
So thank you again. Please feel free to ask questions in the comments section, and you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Happy painting!